I've now been working on shooting Barnard 33, the Horsehead Nebula, and its backdrop, IC434, and the associated features, such as the Lumpstar Nebula, for almost two months now. And my hope has been to collect so much integration on this target that I might be able to create one of the most detailed images ever made with an amateur telescope of the vast dark areas of this nebulous region, including both the famous Horsehead itself and the roiling dark nebulosity upon which it seems to perch. But the weather was uncooperative ever since I began the project. The first two nights of the project the sky was crystal clear, but the full moon was out in force and the IC434 and Barnard 33 region were under 40 degrees from the powerful bright light of the full moon. Using a technique that I created and call strategic frequency acquisition that I covered in a previous video linked here, and you can also find a link to it in the description below. I was able to begin collecting photons, keeping only the high frequency information. That's the information that contains the detail of an image. Light and color is caught in low frequency information, and it's very susceptible to moonlight. High frequency information is what contains the detail and definition within an image, and it's quite resistant to moonlight. Not entirely impervious, but with just a little tightening of the gamma, the effect of the moonlight can be nearly stripped out. And this is not a filtration technique. You don't need to shoot in narrowband or with any other particular filters to accomplish this. It can be done with RGB, LRGB, or any other filming technique. Using strategic frequency acquisition, I was able to gather about six hours of high frequency information and then combine it with the mere three hours of low frequency information I had been able to gather. And using that initial small bit of information, I was able to create a rudimentary test image from which I was able to gauge roughly how much integration time I might need in total to complete this image. At this point in time, I think the image needs at least 34 hours of integration. But since so much of it is dark nebula and I really want to try to capture every bit of detail hidden in there, it might need considerably more. Clouds then rolled in for about two weeks, long enough for the moon to go away. But when they vanished, the clear night was also quite windy, so it wasn't a great night to shoot, and of the entire night's imaging, I was only able to collect another three hours worth of integration. That little bit of cloud cover turned out to be one of the rainiest spells I have ever seen in my life, and there was rain and wet snow for 39 straight days. And it was only about a week ago that the weather finally broke, and I was once again able to begin collecting photons on IC434 and its associated regions. I confess to being particularly excited about this project. I imagine that for so many of us who fall in love with the stars, seeing a photo of the mysterious Horsehead Nebula was one of the things that triggered that passion. I still remember a trip that I had taken to a planetarium as a child. The Associated Observatory had photographed the horse head and posters of it were being sold in their bookshop. I bought that poster and it hung on my wall for many, many years. This mysterious, dark, horse-shaped object. And it's doubtless one of the things that spawned my interest in dark nebulae. Over the years, I've shot dark nebulae a lot. And out of sheer curiosity, I've pushed my imaging of them harder and harder to derive the detail out of them. Dark nebulae are often portrayed as these black, impenetrable clouds that break the line of sight of the stars. But they are made of matter, and they are reflective. And it's possible to reveal their details. It just takes a lot of integration time, and I do mean a lot. But if there's matter in the vicinity, and a source of light, with enough integration time the details begin to show through. Thanks to the recent break in the bad weather, over the last week, I have been able to accumulate another 18.5 hours of integration time, both low and high frequency information. And that, combined with the 6 hours of high frequency information and the additional 3 hours of low frequency information that I had managed to accumulate, gets the image up to 20.5 hours of total low and high frequency information with an additional 3 hours of high frequency information, yielding this as an outcome. There is at this point enough information in the darker regions to begin revealing the detail. And I don't know how much longer the weather is going to cooperate. I am supposed to get one more clear night tonight. But the forecast says that most of that clear weather will not happen while the horse head is well positioned. So this is probably the last integration time I'll be able to add to this image for at least a couple weeks. But I think I have enough information in the image now to begin discussing in more depth the lifting procedure. It's the same process that I used to lift the information here. And the process is based on the fact that digital sensors are very good at capturing invisible information and darkness. And it's why that pretty much since the beginning of digital photography, that photographers have said, expose for the brights. 
you expose for the brighter regions of an image so that you don't blow them out. If you blow them out, that information is lost. But digital cameras can just keep accumulating and accumulating information in dark regions. And then that information can be digitally lifted and developed into an image so that we can see it. This is in fact the root of the technology that allows us to use modern digital camera sensors to do such good astrophotography these days. With almost any astrophotography image, especially if you're shooting deep sky objects, what you're shooting is dim, often too dim for the human eye to see at all. And when the histogram is stretched, you are effectively lifting that image out of darkness. To better understand this, I'm going to illustrate the process with an earthbound image. Here is a winter image from the icy stream that flows beside my cottage. This image is especially useful to us because in the foreground we have bright lights where sunlight is tracing across the forest floor. We have middle tone illumination in the middle where the stream is flowing. And just above the upper middle of the image, the stream has carved a bit of a shelf below some packed ice. And there, the image is trapped in deep shadow. I shot this image with my Fuji X-T3 camera, oh, I think about three years ago. And as always, I was shooting in RAW, because RAW captures all the available information, even the things you cannot see. Now, in particular, you can see to the right of the darkest area, pretty much all the detail in there seems to be lost, doesn't it? I'm working in Photolab 8 because of its extremely powerful ability to manipulate light and shadow within an image and I'm going to use it to begin lifting the information out of that darkness. It's actually a fairly simple procedure. I always begin by lifting the darkest dark, so I'll start on the black slider. When lifting, I just work my way up from the darkest tone, so I'll move up to the shadow slider, and I'm lifting information till I feel I have pulled out as much information as I need to reveal the detail in there, without pushing so hard as to lead to banding or flattening within the image. And I'll push on and adjust the midtones because there is some midtone brightness in there that can be lifted a little bit. It'll also get a lot of the rest of the image. And I'll make a final adjustment on the highlights. Lifting the lowest regions will not adjust the highlights, but when you change the overall brightness tone of an image like this, it often helps to take a second look at the highlights because they may not quite match the context of the image any longer. After only a few moments, we have an adjusted image where the detail that was hidden in darkness is now revealed. I could push that detail even brighter, but I think it's plenty now. You can see the water flowing through there and the texture of the stone at the opposite bank of the stream. You will doubtless notice, however, that the dark region of the image now has a considerable amount of noise in it. And that's because the exposure was done for the brights. The darker region lacks information and where information is lacking, noise appears. Modern technology makes this easy to resolve though. Just for the fun of it, I'll take a moment to run Photolab 8's famous Deep Prime noise removal tool on it. DeepRime is processor intensive, so it doesn't fully run until you export the image. To see what it's going to do, you have to open up a loop and view a portion of the image. To see the noise and the process of removal, I'll position the loop over the darker region of the image. I'll turn the denoiser off, and then we'll see the image with a full amount of noise in it. It's pretty messy, isn't it? And now I'll turn it back on and we'll see the image after DeepRime does its magic. And a moment later, we have a beautifully cleaned up image. Modern denoising tools combined with AI make noise much less of an issue than it used to be. Still, what a denoising tool does is fills in the spaces where noise appears with what it thinks should be there based on context. But the most accurate way to defeat noise is just to keep accumulating integration time. Let's review. Here's the original image before we lifted the darker regions. And here's the lifted image. Darker. Lifted. We can do the exact same thing in astrophotography, and in fact do the exact same thing every time the histogram of an image is stretched, to pull the image out of darkness into a range that is more comfortable for the human eye to see. And we can further adapt this process to lift the darker regions of any astrophotography image. What you need is enough exposure and or integration time. You have to have the photons there or the information to begin with, otherwise you're just lifting noise. But if you collect the integration time, there's going to be an image there to lift out of darkness. Now the Horsehead project isn't done. It absolutely needs a considerable amount more integration time. As noted, anywhere from nine to as much as 100 hours. However, we have a fair amount of integration time right now and we can take a better look at the process. So let's take a closer look at lifting dark information within an image. It's really not hard. This is the latest combined LRGB information that I have so far of the Horsehead project. 
showing the background nebulosity of IC434, Barnard 33, the Horsehead Nebula itself, and in GC 2023, the Lump Star Nebulosity in the foreground. And this image comprises 21.5 hours of low frequency information and 24.5 hours of high frequency information. I'm going to start by just orienting the image 90 degrees to the left. It doesn't make any difference in terms of editing it, it's just, I think most of us are used to seeing the horse head standing up. So all I've done with this image so far is stacked all the subs and picks in sight and run the various exterminators on it to remove noise, sharpen up everything and get rid of the stars. The RGB information was combined and then exported to Affinity Photo along with the luminance information as a separate plate. In Affinity Photo, the luminance plate was composited to the RGB plates using the luminosity composite mode. That mode puts together all the information while respecting both the brights and the dark regions so that regions are neither blown out nor lost in darkness. What this means is that even though we cannot see a great deal of the information in the dark regions right now, it is there. And just as with the image of the icy stream, to get the information out of the darker regions, we just have to lift it. Photolab 8 is an extremely powerful tool for this task. And just as before, I'll start by lifting the darker regions of the image. Also as before, I'll begin on the darkest slider bar. Moving the black slider just a few points up will reveal the darkest information. I could lift the black region much further, but we want to leave some darkness to it to provide contrast as contrast emphasizes detail. Now let's lift the shadow slider. With that brief, small adjustment, we can see more detail from the darker region being lifted out, appearing as rippling clouds of gas in red and blue hues. I'll continue making a few more adjustments to the slider bars, elevating the brightness of the entire image right across the board. These are, of course, only very basic adjustments for illustration purposes here, and a true and precise lifting of the dark information as possible using far more precise methods that take advantage of Photolab 8's exceedingly powerful layer-based local adjustment tools. In the Local Adjustments tab, I can select information based on hue, brightness, local regions augmented with AI to determine what is the information that I want to work with, and by a variety of other methods to make precise adjustments to the luminosity of the image, allowing for the very specific and refined elevation of dark information. This allows for a very precise and elegant workflow that also goes pretty quickly because the tools are very capable of quickly and easily isolating the relevant information to work on. The trick with such a task, if one can call it a trick, is to avoid pushing the information so hard that the software becomes confused and starts trying to force things that are not there. But images give clues to let you know when you're pushing the information so hard, such as the noise being amplified or the image itself devolving into grittiness. You don't need Photolab 8 to elevate dark regions. Many photo editors are capable of doing this, but I prefer to do this work with Photolab 8 due to its very precise ability to select relevant areas of the image to develop. Thank you for watching. If you have any thoughts or observations, please leave them in the comments section below. Now, on a personal note, I have to say, I am really jazzed up that I have had finally about a week of good weather. It hasn't been perfect due to high altitude ice in the atmosphere. But after an unbelievable 39 days of precipitation, mixed ice, rain, and snow, it feels really good to be collecting photons again. It was starting to feel like astrophotography was just a dream, but now I've had the observatory open and working for almost a week. Alright, you know what comes next. Get out there and shoot that amazing sky.